Uh, Corey Ten Boom was a Holocaust survivor, a Christian. She said, if the devil cannot make us bad, he will make us busy. There's an old acronym or acrostic that was busy, is standing for being under Satan's yoke. That if he can make you busy, he'll take your eyes off of where life is found. He'll get you going through constantly just going through the motions and the treadmill of life, never actually going anywhere that matters. But you'll be busy. There is no shortage of stuff to keep us busy. There are regular demands on our time that can sometimes make life crushing, and consequently, a lot of things suffer in our lives because we are so busy. Marriages suffer. Your health can suffer. Relationships with children can suffer. Relationships with friends. And most importantly, your relationship with Christ. Because when we're too busy, that all those things get squeezed out to whatever leftover time we have, which isn't much. If Satan can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. When we think about how Jesus said that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, you might wonder, kill in what way? Destroy in what way? Steal in what way? One of the ways he'll work on you is to steal your time, to cause you to become so busy that you lose sight of the more important things. He loves to get us off track. He loves to cause things to suffer in our lives simply because we're not disciplined with our time. It was Corey Tinboom who said, if the devil can't make us bad, he'll just make us busy. And here we live in this life where just everything's a thousand miles an hour. And there's texts coming in and there's things we got to read and places we got to go and stuff we got to just busy, just busy, just busy. And we've accepted that this is just how it has to be. But God says, no, there's something you can choose to do and you can choose to stop. And, 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 and I would say, if you're like me, the things you're busy doing are good things. They're not bad things. It's not like you're out foolishly using your time. You're probably busy with children and work and school and being married and business. You know, the job that you have is probably consuming you like it is for most of us. I believe most of our problems, not all of them, but most of our problems are either caused or made worse because we're moving too fast for too long. Every single one of us has been given the same 24-hour time period every single day by God. The question is, how are you going to use those 24 hours that God has given you? The deal is, we need to be asking God what He wants us to do with the time He has given us. Think of time like every precious thing God has given you, because it is. It's a gift. The time that we have is a gift from God, and we don't know how much time that we have. He does. And so we need to be good stewards or managers of the time that God has entrusted to us. And so maybe it needs to start with us learning how to say no to some demands of our time. And you got to come to the place where you say, I don't live for everyone else's approval, because if I do, I'm fighting a battle I'll never win. I live for God's approval. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to stand before him and say, I've tried to be faithful and handle and do everything I can. But if I live for a life that doesn't ever disappoint someone, it's never going to happen. And the key is this, we put God first in our lives. You got to every day, I want you to be first in my life. It creates capacity for all of the other stuff. Priority determines capacity. So where is your priority today? My prayer for us is that today would be a moment for us to realign our priorities. Say, God, I wanna put you first. It's all important, but God, you're first in my life. But here's the problem. If your time with God is hit and miss, if your time with God is not a priority, you will miss much of what God wants to do in your life. When I have my devotions, when you have your devotions, you are focusing on matters that matter. You're focusing on the most important things. 
listen to me very closely. There is one reason you're here. And all these different messages are going to bombard you every single day about what you need to get done, what you haven't got done, what more you need to do. There is one thing that will actually bring you life and the one thing behind why you have life. And that's to know Jesus and to walk with Jesus. And he brilliantly says, there's only one thing that at the end of the day matters. It's not business. It's not marriage. It's me. And you and every other person knowing me. Friend, you want joy? You want contentment? It's a byproduct of getting close to Jesus. When Jesus is our top priority, when he's first and when he's foremost, everything else in my world finds its proper placement. It finds its proper alignment. And it's there in that place. When Jesus is first, when I'm near to him, that I realize my joy is not anchored in stuff. It's anchored in knowing and getting closer to the person of Jesus. It's in practicing his presence. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that in his presence, there's a fullness of joy. Spend time with him every day. Talk to him. Listen to his voice. Develop a friendship with him. Express your love for him. Receive his love for you. Don't let your relationship become stale or routine or stagnant. Stay connected to the vine. In John 15, Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. Remain in me. Abide in me. Stay in a constant, intimate relationship with me. The more time I spend with him in prayer and Bible study, the better my day goes. And most of us can testify to the fact that if you don't order your day with, with seeking the Lord, your day ends up being much more chaotic, you're more frazzled at the end of the day, you got a headache, you're stressed, and all these things that you couldn't anticipate ended up happening. And I've just noticed over the years that the more I'm careful to start my day with prayer in the Bible, the better off my day goes. And I've personally noticed, and I share this with you if this helps you, but it's helped me over the years, I've noticed that Proverbs in the morning gives me wisdom for the day, and Psalms at night helps to put my mind at rest. When I meet with God, here's what I'm saying. I'm saying, God, I absolutely have to have your help to make it through the day. When you don't have your prayer time, essentially what you're saying is you're saying, I got it, God. I don't need your help today. I can get along just fine. I can do not, and, and that's the height of pride. What does the Bible say? God resists the proud. He holds his hand. You know, so when you say, I don't need to pray, God's like, okay, you, you got it. Go ahead. See, see what you can do. But when I pray, when you pray, when we have our devotional time, what we're saying is, God, I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not creative enough. I'm not winsome enough. I'm not connected enough. God, I'm not enough of anything to make it through the day. I've got to have your help. And when you start the day that way, God says, I am so glad you asked. I'm going to help you in the things you've mentioned and the things you never thought about. I'm going to go before you. I'm going to be behind you. I'm going to be beside you. I'm going to anoint you? Why? Because he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the person who needs him and realizes it by reaching out to him. Now, when people say, for example, you know, I, I would read the Bible, but you know, I'm just so busy, I don't have time. Or, I know I should spend more time in prayer, but I just don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Think about what you're saying. You're saying to the God of this universe, the Creator, you're saying to the Sovereign of this universe, our Sustainer, you're saying to this God who is our Judge, you don't have time for Him? Who is the source of every single thing you have? Who desires an intimate relationship with Him? It takes time. The most powerful, awesome thing in my life today, second to nothing, is getting on my face before Him and talking to Him and listening and sensing His Spirit and my Spirit being in oneness with each other and knowing that no matter what I ask, 
I'm not going to be disappointed. No matter what I ask, he's not going to get upset. No matter what I ask, God is more than sufficient and adequate to meet this hunger within me that he's placed there. He has placed within all of our hearts a hunger. The problem is that when a person doesn't understand what's going on, they think if, they, if I had this and her and him and that, I'd be satisfied. Only God can satisfy the human life. And you know, I could say that 10,000 times, and people would hear it and walk right away trying to fulfill this place for intimacy with something else. It doesn't work. And Jesus says there's one thing in life that matters. And you're either going to spend your life missing it or spend your life experiencing it. And that's knowing me and walking in relationship with me.